everybody. I'm back. Finally. Just gonna let the music play for a minute. All right, everybody. Today is Friday, March 19th, 2021, and this is the very first episode of season two of the Vanguard Fitness Hour coming to you live. And uh, I am really geeked and excited to be back. It's been about three weeks off now, uh, so I had a lot of time uh, to work on some things, develop some new content and um, topics that I want to share with you, and also line up some very special guests. I think you're going to be pleased with uh, what's going to be coming up for this next season. So looking forward to it. Um, once again, Glad to be back, uh, and we're going to go ahead and get started right away, uh, because as always, I've got 20 pounds of fitness inspiration, motivation, and information to stuff into a 10-pound bag, so it's time to get going right now. So let me cue this music, uh, bring it on down a little bit, and we are going to go ahead and get started. So first thing I want to share with you, um, you notice that today's broadcast is a little bit uh, different from our last uh, broadcast. That is because I am flying solo. So as you uh, heard from that little music uh, bit that came through, uh, I'm uh, not a producer at all, but I'm going to do my best to bring you the most um, entertaining uh, broadcast possible. So going to get going with it now. Um, first topic, things that I wanted to, oh, and by the way, super producer is just fine. Uh, my super producer is uh, Tronce, and uh, he's just got some things that he's working on right now. We'll be back at it and bringing you the best podcast um, broadcast possible. So first topic of the day, I wanted to start off because it has been a bit of a layoff. In fact, three weeks off. I wanted to kind of bring you up to date with what's been going on with the fitness guru. Uh, so wanted to uh, share with you what it is that I've been uh, that I've been doing. I actually spent some time, surprisingly enough, listening to podcasts. And uh, why am I doing that? Am I trying to steal ideas? Am I trying to be critical or critique other people's uh, content? Not at all. I just like to see what's out there. What is interesting to people? What is it that folks like to check out? What is it that's going to be interesting uh, to folks? what kind of content and topics and that sort of thing. So that's what that was about. So I actually spent some time listening to different fitness podcasts that were out there. Uh, some obviously were better than others, but what I found uh, is that quite a few of them tend to be, in my estimation, disparaging. Um, it was, you know, a lot of these, uh, the, the, the content providers basically took an approach where um, I know it all, you know nothing, and, you know, just follow along with what I say. Don't question me. And this is the information I'm going to put out to you. Um, some of that content was actually insulting in a lot of cases. And I just tried to put myself in a position of someone that's maybe new to fitness, new to exercise, new to the a fitness lifestyle. And you hear that sort of content and it might make you, it might turn you off from it. Uh, you know, is this what fitness is about? You know, am I supposed to be beat up and talked down to? Uh, in my estimation, not at all. And that's not what I want this broadcast to be about. I want the most effective and uh, informative uh, in uh, content and information to be shared with you so that you are encouraged, so that you are motivated, so that you're inspired, just like the tagline that I use at the beginning of every show. I never want to talk down to the audience. And that's why I, 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 I try to get your content uh, for these uh, for these broadcasts. I want to hear what it is that you're interested in hearing, what it is that you like, what are your dislikes, what do you want to know more about, what do you want to uh, see less of. So I want it to be very interactive, uh, and I never want to be like some of those podcasts that I had the uh, misfortune, I guess, uh, to actually listen. So I want this to be a different kind of a product. So that is a part of what I've been up to. Another, I had the extreme benefit of working with uh, Advocate South Suburban Hospitals Department of Diabetes and Endocrinology. I have a good friend uh, that works with their pre-diabetes uh, management program or prevention program. 
So this is actually the second time I've done this. I actually uh, joined in on one of their Zoom meetings because right now they're not gathering in uh, public spaces and that sort of thing. So I was part of their Zoom meeting and I provided content on the benefits of diet and exercise um, and managing that uh, your pre-diabetic condition and things that you can do to make sure that you're as healthy as possible. So I had this great opportunity to talk to these participants in this program. And this looks like it's going to be something that's ongoing. So I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, it's a, a great opportunity to share more information with people who really need it and are actively seeking it out. So that gives me another audience to uh, share that fitness lifestyle information, which is very important to me. It's actually what I consider to be uh, my purpose. What else? Starting on month, the first of the month, this was Monday, March 1st, I began an intermittent fa fasting implementation program. So I am currently undergoing and participating in intermittent fasting. So basically what that means is the there's different types of intermittent fasting. And I'm doing it uh, just to lean out lose a few, few pounds, tone up, that sort of thing. There's a ton of benefits with uh, with fasting. It gives your digestive system a break is a primary one. Um, but the type that I'm using is the 16-8 method. So uh, within a, an eight hour window, I consume all of my meals. And for the other 16 hours, I, I don't eat anything at all. Basically it's just water or tea uh, and that sort of thing. So the way that mine works is between 12 o'clock PM and eight o'clock PM, is my window of food consumption. So I'll eat between those eight hours. After that, eight o'clock, that's the last meal. I don't eat another uh, uh, morsel of food until 12 o'clock the next day. So it's not that difficult. It's not as challenging as some people might think. It took a couple of days to get used to it, but basically what it boils down to is I'm skipping breakfast. And you know, so now my first meal comes right around lunchtime. Uh, and again, it's not that that uh, that big a deal. And I'm really starting to see some of the benefits. I'm starting to shed some pounds. I really did it kind of as an experiment because there's so much talk out there about intermittent fasting and its benefits. And I wanted to try it for myself because it's very difficult to talk about or recommend something when you haven't done it yourself. So that's the approach that I decided to take. All right, next, uh, sponsorships uh, and the sp status of current sponsorships for the program, the Vanguard Fitness Hour. I am, uh, and pretty soon you're going to be seeing and hearing um, ads. Not, uh, they're not going to be beating you over the head, but I am going to be promoting and talking about different products and services that I believe in, that are beneficial to individuals, that support the fitness lifestyle that I uh, like to promote with the viewers and followers that I have uh, in terms of making sure that I've, I'm getting great information and um, content out there to folks. So you're gonna be seeing some of that. Uh, if you happen to have a company or a service that is uh, directly linked and tied into the fitness space, uh, I'm not looking for you know people that, uh, that you know, or, or not, not to say that there's anything wrong with these types of businesses, but this isn't for, um, you know, if you're a car dealership, it's not for uh, you know liquor stores. Uh, it's not for carpet salespeople. Uh, this is for fitness products and fitness services because I want the content to be uh, to flow and be congruent with the message that I like to promote to on this broadcast channel and through all of my social media platforms. So uh, that is something new that you're going to be seeing. I'm exciting, uh, excited to bring to you some of the sponsors that are gonna be uh, showing up on this program. So uh, that's uh, good news. And then finally, what's new with the fitness guru? Faith, I had quite a few people ask me about this. Uh, before I started the Vanguard Fitness Hour, I was doing a program with a good friend of mine, Bishop L. Smith, who is the pastor of his own church. And we did a program called Faith and Fitness. It was every Wednesday, and it was basically fitness from a biblical perspective. And you know, the Bible talks numerous times about uh, extra, uh, fitness and taking care of your body and eating right and making sure that you're taking care of your, uh, your, your body the way that uh, your creator intended you to do. So that program is actually coming back. We're going to re uh, revamp it and it's going to return to the air on Wednesday, April 14th at 12 o'clock noon. You'll find the, uh, I'm going to promote some uh, information about it to let you know what's going on with it. Uh, you'll be able to see this on directly on Facebook, and I'll probably have it on this platform as well. So I'm excited to uh, bring that program back. So it's going to be myself along with Pastor Bishop L. Smith. All right. 
one of the topics that I wanted to bring uh, up for this second season, season two, is the Vanguard Word of the Week. So what I'm going to do with this uh, segment of the program, I'm going to take a fitness topic, term, word, that sort of thing, and I'm going to break it down and explain to you what that is. Because I noticed that a lot of times I use terms and phrases and that sort of thing. Uh, individuals that might not be directly tied into the fitness community might not understand that or know what that means. So I want to start to pick just certain words and, and, and explain them so that you can add that to your own lexicon the same way that I do with mine. So our Vanguard fitness word of the week is electrolytes. So you hear a lot about electrolytes, especially when you see these commercials for um, uh, sports drinks, you know, your Gatorades or your Powerades and that sort of thing. And by consuming these beverages, you're replacing your electrolytes and that's beneficial. Well, what does that exactly mean? What does that entail? So electrolytes, basically these are any of the ions and we're talking about sodium, potassium, uh, calcium, bicarbonate, and uh, in, 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 a, in a biological fluid, something like serum or blood serum, serum or blood or urine or saliva or interstitial fluid or cytosol, uh, they regulate or affect most of the body's uh, cellular processes. Things like the flow of nutrients into a cell and the flow of waste products out of a cell. So they are very beneficial. Uh, and in fact, electrolytes allow our muscles to contract and they help to produce energy for the body. So electrolytes, very beneficial. That is exactly what an electrolyte is. So next time you hear that term, you won't be confused. You'll have a good idea of what that term actually means. So happy to share that with you. You're going to keep that going um, on a rotational basis. Every once in a while, I'm going to bring back another word that I want to explain to you and share with you. So again, you're just more informed. All right. Uh, last show, actually, I brought to you the Vanguard question of the week. So, uh, and again, I'm going to have you uh, bear with me a little bit because I am doing all of the graphics. So you just saw that little logo change up and that is our Vanguard question of the week logo. And uh, the Vanguard question of the week was had exactly uh, uh, to do uh, or direct correlation with what we're hearing about all the time right now, the vaccine, the vaccine, the vaccine. The Vanguard question of the week was, do you intend to take the coronavirus vaccine. Now, I actually put that up on my social media page, which is Vanguard Exercise Management. And um, as of today's date, which is Friday, March 19th at 1245, because these are very recent numbers, at about 418 people that were reached. Uh, and I, I, I offered two options. Now, uh, I probably, next time I'll do one, I'll probably add a third option, which is undecided or something like that. Uh, but I did not have a, uh, a third option. So it was basically, yes, uh, most definitely. The second option was no, absolutely not. So the split right now in terms of individuals that intend to take the coronavirus vaccine, uh, yes, most definitely, 75% of respondents said they would take the vaccine. 25% of respondents said, no, absolutely not. So I found these uh, these results to be very interesting. I don't want to influence people one way or the other. I just wanted to get that feedback from you. Uh, there are two days left to voice your choice. So if you want to have your input uh, recognized and registered and you haven't already done so, go to my social media page on Facebook. That's Vanguard Exercise Management. Scroll down. It's maybe about uh, four posts uh, from the most recent and you will see a picture of uh, an injection and then another one with a uh, hypodermic with a uh, circle with a red line going through, it, which indicated, you know, basically yes or no, uh, depending on your uh, your preference. So I would like to get that response uh, from each and every one of you. So, again, make sure you go on that social media page, Vanguard Exercise Manager, and voice your choice. Do you intend to take the vaccine or are you uh, totally opposed to it? And there's no way in the world that you're going to have that uh, done. Very interested to hear what you have to say. All right, that leads up to our next topic, which is Vanguard, uh, fitness in the news, uh, fitness news. So I've got a couple of very interesting uh, topics that I wanted to share with you uh, today. And the first, let me just pull up this graphic, is, there it is right there, good, got it pulled up. Um, Ad bods are now considered to be the most attractive body type. Now, 
as soon as I saw this pop up, I just knew that I had to investigate this further. I mean, um, I, I couldn't imagine that. I mean, it just uh, because it, just as you see on the image, the dad bod is particular is characterized by a pot belly, uh, loose muscle tone, um, not in good shape, that sort of thing. It's almost an unhealthy looking appearance. Uh, but for whatever reason, this article popped up and it drew my attention to it. And I, like a moth to a flame, I had to find out more about it. So I actually pulled up a copy of the article. I want to share it with you right now. According to a new poll, dad bods are no, now the most attractive body type. Dating.com, which is a dating site that's online, you know, a lot like, uh, uh, you know, I can't even think of any dating sites right now. Uh, I guess Bumble, uh, Plenty of Fish, that sort of thing, right? Uh, they polled their members and three out of four said they're a fan of the dad bod look, meaning not too big, but not exactly in shape either. It's not clear if that also extends to women or mom bods. I didn't even know that was a term until I read this article. Uh, but only 15% of people overall said they preferred a more chiseled or muscular look. 45% of single people with dad bods are proud enough to brag about it on dating apps. And around one in five said body type doesn't really matter to them. Personality matters more. That said, 70% of single people have started working out again to get in shape for the summer. But a huge chunk of people who've joined a gym this year admit they haven't gone yet. No surprises there. Uh, I'm Now, again, I was uh, taken aback by this. Um, I just found it interesting. I always thought that the preferred look was uh, a muscular look, a toned look, a, uh, a physically developed look. Uh, one that uh, you just screamed, you know, I take care of myself. Um, you know, the, my appearance is important to me. Um, I don't want to appear to be soft, that sort of thing. So uh, this really flies in contrast to that. Um, now, the numbers that they use, I mean, there's some pretty significant numbers in that. So it's not just a study of, you know, five, 10 people or whatever. Uh, they're a pretty extensive study. Um, so I, I'm not sure about your thoughts, but is this a trend? Is this something that is going to be uh, more? and more popularized? Are we going to see more of it in, uh, we're actually already seeing quite a bit of it in, uh, in uh, television ads and uh, even in magazine ads and some of the ads that pop up when you're on uh, the internet and that sort of thing. But the dad bot, is that really something that, uh, that uh, women are, are interested in? Um, again, if that's the case, you know, I'm totally surprised by it. I just uh, didn't see that one coming. So I'm going to invest, keep uh, up to date on that one. I'm going to continue to investigate it and see where the, the numbers go. But uh, as of right now, I guess it's a trend. You know, people are actually into uh, the dad bot. So, you know, if you got one, I guess there's uh, there's hope. Uh, but now being totally serious about it, this should not be a report like that should not be used as an excuse to uh, just take it easy and not pay attention to your own physical capabilities and making sure that you're as healthy as possible. It's not an excuse or green light to start eating whatever you want, uh, adopting a sedentary lifestyle um, and really getting away from those healthy habits. Okay. This is just a, this is a news story and this is like a trend. Trends come and go. All right. But health, health is always ongoing. And that's what is going to really make the difference in terms of your quality of life. So keep that in mind. Interesting story. Uh, looking forward to getting some feedback from that uh, and also to get more information as the reports on this story uh, develop. So leads me to article number two, our second story. So let me bring that up and pull up our graphic for it. And there we have it. We've got Wendy Williams. Now, a lot of you probably saw this uh, on on the news or um, on social media and that sort of thing. Uh, she really generated a lot of buzz with her stance on the coronavirus vaccine. I found it very interesting myself. Uh, I, now, let me be clear. I'm not a fan of Wendy Williams. That's not, no knock against anyone that is. It's just not, not my type of show. But I, I really was um, uh, encouraged um, by her stance on this issue. So let me bring up this article that I wanted to share with you that I pulled up. The, the, the title of the article is The Issue with Wendy Williams Not Wanting the COVID-19 Vaccine. Um, to date, millions of people have received their COVID-19 vaccinations. 
although there are minimal side effects so far anyway, uh, such as sore arm or fever, which is common when your body is building immunity against a virus. It appears that the vaccine overall isn't harmful. Many scientists and doctors have suggested different vaccinations such as Pfizer, uh, BioNTech, Moderna, uh, and Johnson and Janssen by Johnson and Johnson. President Joe Biden also states there will be enough doses for every American by the end of May. Despite the positives, radio legend and talk show host Wendy Williams is not that interested. In a recent appearance on the Dr. Oz show, William, Williams chronicled many topics, including when she fainted on her show during a Halloween special in 2017. But the moment garnering, garnering attention was when the television personalities were having a candid talk about the pandemic and the vaccinations available. Williams surprised the audience by saying she won't get the vaccine. No, I don't trust it, Williams said, with conviction. I've not gotten the flu shot either though, and you and I have talked about that. Several of the doctors on my team have told me, Wendy, get the flu shot. I've never had the flu. I'm not getting a flu shot. I very rarely get a cold. I have, I never have headaches. I don't take aspirin because I feel my heart murmur or something like that. Um, I'm not getting it. No, I don't trust it. There, I said it. This was her direct statement. After Dr. Oz alluded to the fact that there could be consequences from her admission due to her large platform, uh, but Williams didn't budge, saying, staying true to her beliefs. I'm not getting the vaccine, she said bluntly. She continued, listen, 10 million people and more have the flu vaccine. And how many people per year catch the flu? No, I'm not getting the vaccine. Dr. Oz, I'm not. I don't trust it. When asked why she specifically doesn't trust the COVID-19 vaccine, Williams couldn't identify an exact reason. Doctors are really smart people, she said, but doctors don't know everything. That's been proven as well. I'm not getting the vaccine. William, Wendy Williams will not get the shot. Dr. Oz can't even convince her. Although the vaccine helps people prevent the spread of the virus, which claimed the lives of over half a million people, I can understand why Williams may be uncomfortable with the idea of getting a vaccine, the article goes on to say. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention notes that immunocompromised people have a higher chance of contracting COVID-19. So in essence, a vaccine could be beneficial to her. However, data isn't available on the safety of the mRNA COVID-19 uh, vaccine. And uh, mRNA basically is messenger RNA. Uh, Williams has opened up about having Graves' disease which may be because of her concern, uh, which may be a concern for her and the vaccine being produced relatively quickly. All in all, when you are a person that has a significant influence on others, saying things like this can make people believe that your opinion is the end all be all, even if it's not the intention. So that is the stance or position of Wendy Williams and the COVID-19 vaccine. Again, not a, a fan of the show. I, I don't watch it, but I have to respect her position. Uh, you have someone with the influence and the notoriety of Dr. Oz basically kind of goading her into saying, okay, I'm going to take the vaccine. It's all right. She was not having it. She has her convictions. She's not comfortable with the vaccine. Uh, she's not taking it. Now, later on, who knows? That position may change. Uh, give me a second here. That position may change. She may take on a, a totally different view of it. But as of right now, she's not comfortable getting it and no one should force her to try to get it. No one should force her to change her opinion. And that's a concern that I have right now with the virus. I'm my, I'm fearful of the fact that people that are uh, against the vaccine will be um, antagonized, uh, will be looked down upon, will be shunned, uh, will be ridiculed for their opinions, for their stances. Um, and I don't think that that should be the case. I also don't think that uh, the vaccine should be forced upon people or mandated in order to do certain things. Uh, now, I can see that happening down the road, uh, starting to see some of that in travel. You may see some of that in terms of uh, maybe access to a restaurant or a movie theater uh, or public spaces. Who knows where this could go? So uh, I think it's very concerning uh, that, you know, someone should be, that will be pressured into changing their opinion on a subject that they, you know, it's their own free will. No one should be forced to change it because, you know, that's the status quo. So, um, again, kudos to Wendy Williams. Uh, I appreciate that uh, that position that she took and I respect it. So I did definitely want to share that with you. So 
That brings us to the next phase of the show, which is our topic for the day. And our topic for the day is, and I'm pulling this up, getting our next graphic. There we go. Making the most of your workout time. Now, how many people, how many times do you go into a gym or any fitness facility? It could be a community center or whatever the case might be. And you see people that are in there and it seems like they're they're not really making the most effective use of their time in the gym. Maybe you're one of those people. Well, so there are things that you could do to maximize your efficiency when it comes to the time that you spend in the gym. I've detailed a few. These are just some of the things that I, I rattle off off the top of my head based off of experiences and the uh, interactions that I have with other individuals as well. So how do you make the most of your workout time in the gym? At the, one of the biggest obstacles that I hear from people when it comes to working out and exercises is, you know, I, I don't have the time. Well, my response typically to that is that there are 24 hours in a day. You are entitled to not just, uh, but you are, it's, 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 um, it's something that's, that's required of you almost in order to make sure that your bodies are as uh, healthy and uh, op uh, operating in as an optimal uh, fashion as possible to do whatever it takes to make sure that you're at your best, not just for yourself, but from others as well, uh, for the people that depend on you. You should be making sure that you dedicate some time to your own level of physical fitness and improvement of that. So with that being said, don't have enough time. Is it really that you don't have the time or maybe you're not managing your time as efficiently as you possibly could? I see this all the time. So what can you do to start? If you're now coming at it from a perspective of someone that's actually in a gym. All right. So I'm also going to talk about outdoor workouts, you know, people that work out outside of a, an actual bricks and mortar facility. But let's use the example of the traditional bricks and mortar gym. OK, first, prior to arriving at your workout site, wherever that might be, visualize what your exercise session is going to look like. OK, think about what it's going to how it's going to feel when you're performing those movements, uh, what it's going to feel like uh, during your break time, um, how it, good it's going to feel once you complete that exercise regimen, your routine for the day. So utilize that mental capacity. So think about it. You know, this is what I'm, I'm looking forward to doing in the gym. When I get in there, I'm going to uh, get on this machine. I'm going to perform these exercises. Uh, I'm going to increase the repetitions that I typically did from 8 to 12, whatever the case might be. Think about it. Visualize your workout. See it in your mind and then make it a reality when you actually set foot into your gym. Next, create a gym checklist. And what am I? I mean. It can be as old school as you want. It could be pen and paper. It can be as technologically uh, advanced as you want. It could be uh, notes that you take on your cell phone or your tablet, whatever the case might be. But get in the habit, create yourself for yourself a gym checklist. And what goes on your gym checklist? It could be the lock that you're going to put on the locker. It could be making sure that you have your ID, uh, a water bottle, gloves, um, a towel an exercise log if you follow along with a detailed program, whatever it is that you need to make sure that your workout is as efficient and effective as possible, make sure you bring that with you. Have that list written out, just like a little, you know, check off your boxes, make sure you have all that ready to go before you actually set foot in the gym. So that's gonna help you to be more organized, more structured. Again, you're not gonna be wasting time in the gym because every minute counts. If you're able to, weather permitting, consider arriving dressed for the gym already. OK, it's going to save you a lot of time because when you figure factor in the time that you got to go into the locker room and get yourself changed and that sort of thing, you know, those are time minutes that you could be utilizing working out. So if you're able to, you know, bring your gym clothes with you. If not, let's say it's cold weather. This is what I've used before. I would actually have my gym clothes underneath my regular clothes. So, again, I'm ready to go. I'm just stripping off the outer layer. I'm ready to go hit the gym and get going with it. So consider um, being dressed in advance ahead of time before you actually start your workout if it's possible and you have the avail availability to do so consider working out or training during periods of time when there is slower traffic at your gym so this may be off hours maybe it's later at night maybe it's um uh, during the off peak hours usually between six uh and nine o'clock really busy at the gym after that time traditionally 
uh, the the membership tends to kind of track downward a little bit. So you got more access to equipment. You've got more space to move about. Uh, as meant the the dumbbells, the equipment that you utilize, not going to be used as often. So consider working out during those off hours uh, when traffic is slower. Okay. If you again, if you have the ability to do that, have your workout regimen for the day written down and or memorized. So. When I go into the gym and I've been working out for years, I always have a schedule, a checklist. These are the exercises that I'm performing. Now it can be, it doesn't have to be as detailed as what I use because well, again, I've been doing this for years. So I've got a, uh, an actual spreadsheet that I can change and modify on my computer. And you know, I'm checking off boxes. I'm making changes to the amount of repetitions, the amount of weight, uh, the amount of sets that I'm performing. It's very detailed, but you can be have it as basic as possible as you want, right? It could be a note on a sheet of paper, just marking down different exercises that you want to include in your regimen. So it could be, you know, your cardio time. It could be your actual use of machines. It can be your actual use of body weight exercises or free weights. Whatever, put all that down. Make sure that it's handy, so you're not guessing at what it is you're going to be doing next. If you have some organization when you get into the gym, you're going to have a more effective workout. You're not just kind of flying around and around, you know, what should I do next? I know I want to work legs, but what exercise should I do first? You've got a plan and a plan is going to help you save time and make sure that your workouts are even more effective than you uh, have been uh, utilizing to this point. Stay focused. This is actually the third tier in the Vanguard motto. The Vanguard motto is train hard, eat clean, stay focused, right? Um, so that stay focused part, what do I mean by that when it comes to being in the gym? Conversations, you know, people love to talk, okay? If it's not you, it's probably somebody else in the gym. Conversations take up time. Uh, it could be televisions. Most modern gyms are going to have flat screen TVs, you know, great graphics, you know, and there's programs on there. It's easy to get distracted. Okay. What the news might be on, it might be some story that you wanted to follow. Or it might be your favorite comedy or drama or whatever the case might be. And you're looking at that. It might be sports highlights. And before you know it, you know, a, a quick glance up at the television has turned into five, 10 minutes, right? So you want to make sure that you're cognizant of that first and then do what you need to do to to block those distractions, um, attractive people. Okay, a lot of times you go into the gym and there's you know good looking guys, pretty women. Uh, they're they're all over the place, right? And it's easy to get that head rotating on a swivel. You know, you may even want to start up a conversation. Keep in mind that you know in traditionally most people are there to get a, a workout in. They're there to, um, uh, to to exercise, get fit, get healthy, that sort of thing. Of course, you do have some people that treat the gym like a a, a nightclub. All right, where uh, without the liquor. Basically, you're uh, looking to socialize and that sort of thing. But the vast majority of people, they're going there. They want to get healthy. They're trying to get fit. They're getting their workout in. I want you to make sure that when you get into the gym, you know, take care of business first. If you want to socialize afterwards, feel free. But a great time waster is are, are those three things that I talked about. Conversations with people that could be, you know, people that you already know you're friends with, uh, people that you just met, or maybe a workout buddy. The televisions are huge, uh, and then uh, again, the you know just the attraction of the opposite sex or same sex, whatever the case might be. But there are a lot of distractions out there. You need to be aware of those because they are time killers. They are time wasters. They drain on your resources, which is in fact the most valuable resource that you have, which is time. So be aware of that. Make sure that you monitor it. Now, people are probably saying, well, you just mentioned three uh, three factors: conversations, you know, talking. Um, televisions, attractive people, but he didn't say anything about cell phones. That's because I set cell phones aside as its very own category. What I think you should, my, my suggestion, and again, this is just my suggestion, is to establish a personal no cell phone policy, okay? Or at the very least, consider switching your phone to airplane mode. What does airplane mode do? I mean, you've probably seen this on your phone. You, you know, Does that mean I got to be on a flight somewhere? Not necessarily. The airplane mode basically disa disables all functions that require cellular data. It's going to basically, for the time that you have it on, it's going to disable your, uh, your your voice calls, any SMS messages, Wi-Fi, et cetera, all those things that are huge distractions. Okay, So for an hour in the gym, I'm sure you can survive without that cell phone being active. You just got to have it with you. You know, Consider using airplane mode. You're not getting calls. You're not getting text messages coming in and that sort of thing. But it still leaves you free 
A lot of people like to listen to music on their phones, you know, during their workout, and that's fine. A lot of people that motivates them, that gets them going. So it does not uh, prevent you from being able to listen to your music. It just disables the communication. So consider doing that because cell phones, again, uh, I, I can't tell you how many times I've walked into the gym, and as opposed to, you know, people are actually sitting on equipment holding a conversation. And that to me is is insane. First of all, it's rude because you know someone else is probably waiting to use that equipment or uh, that machine and that sort of thing. But you know to actually sit on a, a on a, a bench and hold a conversation, or they're spending time taking selfies of themselves and sending the messages. You're wasting your time. You can do that at home. You can do that anywhere. Okay. So again, take care of business first. That is my, my suggestion. Set limits. My next point. Set limits on break time in between sets. Now, typically, when I'm going through my workout, it's anywhere from 60 to 120 uh, seconds in between sets. So that's one to two minutes break time, and then that's it done onto the next set or onto the next exercise. You know, I'm not sitting around, I'm not taking five minute breaks or uh, or anything like that. I keep it concise. I keep it tight. There's a lot of benefits to that. It's going to help me to keep my heart rate up. It's going to keep the muscles warm. It's going to keep me good and flexible and pliable. Um, all these benefits. So I don't want to get into the habit of you know sitting down and taking these long extended breaks in between exercises. Be efficient with your time. 60 uh, seconds, one minute, two minutes, Typically more than enough. If you're doing a very extensive cardio set, maybe um, you're, you're you're doing a circuit training routine. You know, you maybe your breaks can be a little extended a little bit more because those tend to be uh, uh, a little more intense. If you're participating in uh, hit training, high uh, intensity training uh, formats, then that might require a little slightly longer break. But be aware of that. Don't take too long when you're taking your breaks in between your. If it's necessary. Next point. Ask someone, as long as they appear to be competent, for a spot. Okay, basically, what is what is a spot? So if I'm exercising, let's take the traditional bench press. And maybe I'm today I'm going to try for a new record. I want to go five pounds heavier than I've done before, right? But I'm not real sure about it. Ask someone for a spot, as opposed to, you know, waiting around for, you know, uh, someone, a buddy to arrive at the gym and that sort of thing, or maybe putting it off. You know, ask them. Usually most people are more than willing to do that. So they'll come over and they'll spot you. So they're basically just providing you with in using that example of the bench press with a lift. They're making sure that you're you're stable, that you got control of the weight. They're not going to let that weight fall on you, that sort of thing. So it's all right to ask people for a spot. But again, be clear. Now, what do I mean by that? So, for example, going back to that bench press, if you're preparing to lift off. All right. So you got a hold of that bar and you're getting ready to lift it. You want to explain to that person. We're going to lift on three. So one, two, three. I'm pushing, my spot is lifting at the same time. So it's not uncoordinated and I've got better control of the weight and I'm gonna be able to experience a better outcome. So be clear about what your goal is and how you want to perform that spot, how you want that spotter to perform and assist you in your, uh, your exercise movement. Uh, when the equipment that you need is occupied, it's all right to ask if you can work in. I mean, the worst that's gonna happen is they'll say no. OK, but basically working in just means, let's say I'm on a, uh, a rowing machine. No, no, let's not use a rowing machine. Uh, let's say I'm using a, a high pulley uh, cable. So, you know, someone's already on the cable machine. They're working it out and they're getting their exercise in. And, you know, when their set is done, you know, is it hard if I join in? So maybe they're using a different weight than you're used to using. OK, maybe you use a, a heavier weight than that person is using. So you're going to pull that pin, you know, if, as long as they say yes, it's OK. Pull the pin put it in, you know, insert it to the weight that you're used to using, perform your set, and then replace that pin once you're done. And you guys are now working out, uh, basically together, you're working in with that individual that was already at the uh, equipment station uh, before you were. So it's a good way, as opposed to waiting till that person is over, because they, they might be on that piece of equipment for 10 minutes, who knows? And that's a way for you to keep things going. So again, asking someone to work in, it's a good way to make sure that your exercise, your uh, routine is still going and you're not falling behind and losing time or wasting it. Dangle the carrot. Now, what does that mean? So when you think about, um, you know, certain, a lot of times if you want to motivate, um, let's say it's a, um, um, uh, 
an animal, okay, a farm animal, for example, and, and you dangle a carrot in front of it, as long as that animal eats carrots, right? And you have it in front of them and it makes the, 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 the animal move toward it. You know, that's the reward. That's what they're going for. You can use the same example for yourself. I've done it uh, personally during my workouts and my training uh, regimen. So for me, the carrot, the reward was these protein shakes that I, I would make. Now, I happen to really like the protein uh, beverages that I, I, I use. Uh, and that I take on a regular basis. Um, I got these great ingredients. I got it just right. It took a long time and experimentation to come up with a, a blend that I like, and uh, I really prefer the one that I use now. So that was, you know, that was my goal. So I imagine what I was going to be doing once I completed my workout. I was going to be heading home, and I was going to have this protein shake. Okay. Once I changed that up, it was going to be, you know, I was looking forward to this meal. Um, so whatever it is. So that was my motivation. I want to get through this workout so I can enjoy this great protein shake that I've already got waiting for me. It's nice and cool. It's in the fridge. Can't wait to pull it out. And that's my reward for making it. Whatever your reward is, as long as it's not ice cream or burgers or pizza or something like that. But think about something that's uh, desirable to you and use that as motivation to get through that workout. Okay. Um, Finally, prepare, consider preparing your pre and post workout meals in advance. Huge time saver, especially during your post workout. So um, it's going to help to alleviate some of that uh, desire or those urges or cravings that you have because, you know, you expended a lot of calories during your workout, right? You've been, you know, you, you generated, uh, you built up an appetite. So on the way home, let's see, especially if there's any distance between your, your facility that you work out at and, and home, wherever you're headed to. Um, you're going to be passing all kinds of restaurants and that sort of thing. Most of those are going to be fast food restaurants. So there's that urge. And um, what you want to do is to make sure that you've got food prepared. You don't need to make that stop because your food is already there and waiting for you. I'll give you a quick story. I used to work out at a facility in the south sub, uh, suburb of, of Chicago. And um, there was this group of guys that would always work out. And, you know, they, there was four of them. And they'd always have these, you know, Great workouts, at least they appeared to be. And they're grunting and groaning and slinging around a lot of weights and, you know, making a lot of noise and congratulating each other and slapping each other on the back, having these great workout sessions. And then at the end of the day, they'd all, their session, they would all get together, they'd head downstairs, and they'd head toward the parking lot. But they didn't, you know, go to any particular car. I, I started, you know, kind of seeing these guys from the window because the station I was always at um, was, you know, near the window and I could see them. And every day they do this, uh, the same routine. So one day um, I just looked, and this was maybe after a year or so. I was like, you know, with the amount of work that they're doing, I don't see any noticeable physical changes. And I, I couldn't get it. I didn't know what was going on. So I decided I was going to really watch them from the time they left the building until they went across the street or into the parking lot. And what I found was that they were leaving the gym and they'd head right over to a pizza restaurant. I don't want to say the name of the pizza place, but it was a pizza place. Um, so I, again, I was really curious. Um, I actually drove by on the way out and they're sitting around, I'm peeking through the window. I see the same group of guys and they got a big old, looks like a deep dish pizza with a big old pitcher of beer. Basically that's like running in mud. Okay, you're not, I mean, any advances or any progress that you made in the gym, you're basically wasting because you're putting in uh, uh, th this bad, greasy food on a regular basis. So that was the answer to my question. Why am I not seeing these significant changes when they're having these fantastic workouts? So keep that in mind. Uh, have your post and pre and post workout meals ready in advance. Again, it's just going to save you time. If you are outdoor training, let's say you're one of those people that likes to work out. I just got a few little tips that I want to suggest to you. Um, when it comes to outdoor training, in order to save time, make sure your workouts are more efficient. Conduct some reconnaissance, okay? Basically, on a, you're on a, a reconnaissance mission. You're going to be knowing your area. You're going to be getting familiar with it. So what's the terrain like? Are there hills? Are, if, if I'm going to be doing uh, outside you know, running and that sort of thing, are there any uh, dips uh, or drop-offs that I need to be aware of? Uh, anything that might interfere or cause me to trip, you know, tripping hazards, that sort of thing. Uh, is it well lit? You know, all these things uh, are what I want to, you know, I want to be aware of. If I'm, uh, a lot of people will utilize a playground, and I, I think that's a great idea. Um, if you go to most playgrounds, I mean, there's a ton of equipment that you can use to get a good workout in. 
there are overhead bars and there are stairs and uh, there are uh, platforms that you can use to perform push-ups or step-ups or jump-ups or whatever the case might be. A, a playground is a fantastic place to get your workout in. But you want to check the time again perform that reconnaissance mission if you know that from this time to this time it's loaded with kids you probably want to avoid it uh not only are you going to be obstructed in terms of being able to get your workout in it kind of looks creepy when you got an adult hanging around a bunch of kids at a playground so keep that in mind too if you're training solo by yourself at a remote location inform someone of your whereabouts let someone know where you're going to be a lot of times people think, oh, I don't need that. I'm a big girl. I'm a big boy. Do yourself a favor. Just let someone know where you're going to be if it's going to be in a remote location. Your safety should be a primary concern. And if you're not concerned about yourself, think about what the person nearest to you, someone that is a, a loved one, think about what they would go through if for some reason they couldn't get in touch with you and something happened to you. Okay, so go ahead and take that step. Not that big a deal. Let someone know where you're going. If you are going on long runs, and I've done this a ton of times, um, long distance running, not really my forte. I'll do it. Uh, I'm not really having a super, uh, a great time uh, while I'm doing it, but I will do them. Long distance runs are very challenging for me. Everybody's got a challenge. That happens to be mine. So what I had to do was establish a mental perspective where I would set these, what I call environmental benchmarks when I became fatigued. Now use that for motivation. What is an environmental uh, benchmark? It's nothing more complicated than finding an object uh, that you can that you're you're trying to reach, and then you set a new benchmark. So I'll give you an example. So when I'm I'm running this path, and it's about a five mile uh, trail, usually right around that three mile mark, I'm starting to feel it, right? So now is the time when I start establishing those environmental benchmarks, and it might be something as simple as a garbage can that's off, off to the side. So I say to myself, if I can just make it to that garbage can. I'll be all right. So I'm, you know, I'm sweating, I'm breathing hard, and and I, I I hit that garbage can. I make it to that point. Cool, I did it. I didn't think I was going to do it. I was struggling, but I made it. Let me set another one. That tree with a broken branch. If I can just make it to that tree, it's going to be good. I'm that much closer to the finish line, and I'll keep going with my jog, and I'll reach that. That's nice. All right, so I'm still going, and maybe there's a, a piece of paper that somebody dropped on the ground or a can or something or a water bottle that somebody left. Let me make it to that water bottle, and I'll keep doing this until I reach my goal. So they're just these little things that I use to keep me going because, you know, a lot of times I'm, you know, I'm struggling, but, you know, I'm, I'm not going to stop. Sometimes I just need a little something extra to get me going and making sure that I stay on target. So Think about that uh, when you use, you're utilizing training uh, that's either going to be taking place at a traditional bricks and mortar gym or if you're doing outdoor training, which a lot of people are doing more of nowadays. All right. Next topic that I want to share with you. Let's scroll on down. And our fitness tip of the week. There it is. Fitness tip of the week is just bag it. What do I mean by just bag it? So. Um, what I'm suggesting is to keep one of the biggest obstacles or barriers or excuses in some cases that most people use when they are, you know, they decide that they're not going to uh, be able to work out for that particular day. I don't have my clothes. Take that obstacle away. And it's a very simple thing to do. Get yourself a gym bag. You know, you could even have a secondary gym bag if you want. Keep a fully stocked gym bag uh, in the trunk of your car in your locker, at work, whatever the case might be, uh, to reduce that common barrier. Have that fully stocked bag ready to go at all times. Okay, if you if you do happen to have a car, keep it in the trunk at all times. This might be the gym bag, might be your secondary gym bag that you never really use. It's an emergency uh, uh, gym bag. That is gonna take away that that obstacle, that barrier, that, uh, uh, that uh, objection. You know, I can't work out because I don't have my gear. You got a bag full of gear right in your trunk, uh, the trunk of your car right now. It's always with you. So that might be something that you want to utilize. So just bag it. Have your uh, your gear ready to rock and roll whenever you're uh, going to be having that, uh, uh, that, that workout session uh, in front of you. So keep that in mind. All right. Next up, I haven't uh, done one for a couple of episodes, but uh, now we're back on track. In fact, the last uh, session where we actually had an exercise of the week which is our next topic, uh, was uh, last season, 
Uh, but they were the string of exercises that I put together and blended into a circuit training set. So what I'm doing is every week I'm going to perform a different exercise. I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to give you the name for it, uh, give you the, the positions and the stances and how you breathe and that sort of thing. And then after uh, five episodes, five exercises, we're going to combine those and create our very own circuit set that we're going to perform together. So kicking off season two, the first exercise of the week is the single arm dumbbell power clean and jerk. So I'm going to get up out of my seat here and I'm going to move to the back of the room. I'm going to reposition the camera so you can see as best as possible what it is that I'm going to be doing. All right, I'm going to reposition that camera. Don't worry, I'm not going anywhere. I'm just uh, getting everything lined up. All right, so hopefully you can see me all right. Okay, so single arm dumbbell clean and jerk. I've got a dumbbell positioned right on me, okay? This is a 40 pound dumbbell, okay? I'm gonna be using that for the exam. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna position it directly in front of me. My feet are a bit wider or outside of my shoulder width position, all right? So I got my feet spread out, toes at a slight angle. I'm gonna start with my right hand. I'm a right-hander, so I'm, that's, my most, that's my dominant side. My non-working hand is gonna be off to the side. I'm gonna bend down, grab that dumbbell. Once I have it secured, I'm gonna thrust it up overhead. I'm gonna switch hands on the way down and repeat. Thrust it up, switch. Thrust it up, switch, thrust it up, switch, thrust it up, switch, couple more, thrust it up, switch, thrust it up, switch. Great exercise, you select whatever weight it is that you want to use to perform that exercise. But that is the single arm dumbbell power clean and jerk. Great exercise, love doing those. All right, what do we have next? Oh, all right, so that actually wraps up the content that I wanted to share with you during this particular broadcast. So again, flying solo. This is Mario Kuntz, the fitness guru. Next show, and I'm a little out of breath because that's a go. That is our outro music. So what I want to share with you, next show is going to be Friday, March 26. That is episode 12, believe it or not. Got to have a special guest with us. That is Miss Ingrid Isaacs. And she's going to be demonstrating with me partner stretches. Some of them are going to be therapeutic in nature. Others are going to be more fitness or exercise related. We're going to show how to utilize stretching as a part of your overall fit regimen to make sure that you're limber, you're preventing yourself from uh, getting tears or muscle strains or muscle pulls. It's going to be a great episode. So again, we're going to be back to our regular time. That is Friday, March 26th. 2021 at 11 o'clock. Be there here at the Vanguard Fitness Hour. Looking forward to having you all back. So take care. Remember the Vanguard motto, train hard, eat clean, stay focused. We'll see you next time.